uh, distinguished delegates, welcome to today's uh, main topic, spatial ecotoxicology and decision support. This is a small introduction to the subject. We will focus on the subject on different perspectives. One is the political perspective, the ecotoxicological perspective, and the technical perspective. For the political perspective, we want to welcome uh, Ambassador Anita Escher from the Embassy of El Salvador uh, in Berlin. A very warm welcome to you. And the uh, main driver of the Nefrolempa project in El Salvador, which is uh, Doctore uh, Orantes, um, who is here at the UN campus in Bonn. A warm welcome to you. And my colleagues from the University of Koblenz Landau. Professor Dr. Ralph Schulz and Dr. Maggie Heber Ruiz um, representing ecotoxicology, uh, Dr. Christian Noss from environmental physics doing low cost tracking, and, more. and a warm welcome to you as well. Thank you for coming and participating at this first virtual conference in the framework of improving public health by application of space technology. Political decision making is based on the awareness of the spatial, spatial patterns of risk and the spatial distribution of available resources. Uh, in this case, water treatment, um, agricultural uh, interventions to minimize exposure to pesticides are relevant uh, decisions that are done on the agricultural level, on the political level and uh, maybe public health intervention and health interventions from the public health and health services. The technical basis of this, these decisions are spatial decision support systems that contain a geographic information system containing the spatial patterns of risk and the decision support system to combine uh, the available resources to mitigate uh, the public health risk. In the definition of spatial public health it is mentioned that it is a multidisciplinary science to prevent disease and prolong lives. In today's main topic, spatial ecotoxicology, we'll see that the response side of spatial public health will focus on an agricultural subject uh, called low cross position farming, which is normally not associated with spatial public health. On today's main topic, we'll consider the low-cost monitoring system, which is on the left side, identify the risk. And we look on low-cost precision farming as a special uh, public health intervention to reduce the application of pesticide. This seems to be a little bit unusual because normally you think about uh, response support in a way of vector control units, disease control, or tailored allocation of medical and public health resources, public awareness, and so on. But in this, in this case, the um, precision farming approach reduces the application of pesticides. First of all, the risk side, we detect spatial patterns of warning triggered by low-cost monitoring systems and implement low-cost monitoring systems where they were not um, implemented before. On the right side, the risk can trigger a more detailed analysis of the chemicals that might be causing a, an increase of public health risk. Agrochemicals can be applied by precision farming and this is a well-established technology. Um, the presence of the smartphones with GPS facilitates the opportunity to use the crop health detection via satellites and provide this information to smartphones for um, a tailored application of agrochemicals X at a rate Y in a certain location. Besides the economic benefits of a reduction of agrochemicals, we have the main public health objective of food security minimize exposure to agrochemicals for farm workers and their environment and the workflow optimization and self-protection of the workers which is related to public awareness and maybe optimize spatial patterns of application of agrochemicals in that area where 
high incidence of chronic kidney diseases are detected. How would such an uh, open source framework would work? So on a display you have an icon for representing the application of agrochemicals in that area at rate Y, uh, which is uh, generalized by an abstract or text message located or attached to that real geographic location. Um, and we have an URL which uh, could expand the short text message to further information on the application rate and maybe detailed information on self-protections for the worker. Yesterday we discussed the WHO framework on clean hands, uh, safe lives, and there you have, we have seen the self-assessment framework. Once detect the risk with the self-assessment framework and provides tools for risk mitigation. Here we have the same thing in the digital environment. Uh, application rate, detailed information for the application of agrochemicals and maybe further information for risk mitigation, public awareness or self-protection measures for the farm workers. To GPS location, a triple of icon, abstract and URL is attached. This is stored in a database and it's visualized in the smartphone technology. Maybe you heard about it like Wikitude. The URL I'm referring to can be any multimedia content, um, videos, wiki content, G GIS risk and response information. And generalizing this framework can be used for uh, decision making in disaster cases or for uh, risk mitigation strategies uh, from WHO. The generic structure of this system of an open source framework will be discussed on Wednesday. The, the suggested uh, open source framework will be an augmented reality source indexer called uh, RZ. Um, this is a server-based uh, software system that uh, detects geographical locations, determines icons, um, extracts abstracts and um, stores the referral links for the smartphone usage and the indexer runs on an existing video wiki database or GIS risk and resource database to collect all the information and store them in this uh, database records consisting of geographical location, icon, abstract and URL. Open source SourceForge project does not exist at the moment, but it's suggested to establish that in the framework at the interface to UN Spider and WHO that it can be used in multiple application frameworks uh, in terms of public health risk mitigation. I do not want to go into detail of the technological detail. I just want to give a brief example how the augmented reality source indexer could work and how would it look like. Um, we uh, took the, uh, the resource uh, Wikipedia and I selected uh, the United Nations Office of Vienna as the, a resource. And we have the URL for this article in Wikipedia. We have an icon for United Nations. And we have a ge geographic location stored on the website uh, of the Wikipedia. It's on the, on the top right. And then if we look on the record in a smart mobile device or smartphone, then in the real camera image, there the icon is integrated and as augmented uh, element. And when you click on that icon, you get the abstract uh, inserted in the smartphone or mobile device display and when you click on the abstract then you will um, re refer to the full article in Wikipedia so that you can read all the details. If it's a YouTube video then you will get the YouTube video related to that abstract. The smartphone is the focal point to uh, reach the people exposed to risk. So the risk information can be re related to resources, can be related to risk, can be related to navigation information to get out of the risk. And uh, the main thing is uh, 
that the user exposed to this can access the information uh, for invisible public health risks. And ecotoxicology is one of um, the invisible public health risks we are dealing with. At the interface of WHO and the hand hygiene self-assessment framework discussed on Monday, um, we have the possibility to provide GIS tailored questionnaires tailored to the risk and resources at the, uh, at the place where the uh, smartphone user is at the moment. So we can collect detailed data in terms of crowdsourcing in that area, provide WHO improvements to that are um, applicable in terms of availability of resources in that, that area, and uh, the risk is uh, geographically tailored, so only questions that have referred to risk that are present in that area will be integrated in the system change module or in the availability of uh, WHO improvement tools. Due to organizational constraints, we will start uh, the sessions for El Salvador later this afternoon to maximize the number of participants for the flash meeting. Now we start with technical presentations um, with uh, Jörg Rapp and Dr. Ralf Wagner. The floor is yours.